Hello, this is Dr. Michael Myers, Associate Professor of Health Sciences at National University in San Diego. In this short presentation, I'm going to give you an overview of StatCrunch and how to get some descriptive statistics quickly from the program. Along the way, I'm going to show you how to create a frequency distribution and how to graph the data as well as determine z-scores. So to do that, I'll go through a quick example that I often give in my classes, and that is an, an analysis of heart rate. So for fun, once I made a bunch of med students jump up and down and measured their heart rate. So their heart rate, of course, went up a little bit. And here are the 25 values that we have to deal with. So I often make the class report back the, the mean, the standard deviation, and other descriptive statistics information and post it up in a Word document and graph the data as well. well we can do that very easily with StatCrunch by just clicking on the Open Stat Crunch button. And you notice when the program opens, it looks a lot like Excel, a spreadsheet program. But Stat Crunch is a real statistical program that's very easy to use. And just like other statistical programs, it just takes a while to get used to how to navigate through all the different menu items. So to analyze the heart rate with statistics, what we first have to do is load the data in. So it's probably not very exciting to watch me type, so I'll go ahead and load the data in from an Excel sheet where I've already put in the, typed in the data. So to do that, I click on the Data tab, Load, From File, and on my computer. That'll call up this dialog box, and what I do here is just browse for the file. And notice it's already got a label in that first column, so that first line is going to be the column head, so I'll leave that clicked. It's already clicked by default. So when it brings it in, it's going to make that first variable one, call it heart rate. And I scroll down and click on load file. And it imports the data. So now I've got all 25 values loaded in and I'm ready to do some stats. To get the descriptive statistics, I simply click on the stat tab. Pull down the menu from summary stats columns because the data here is in our first column and that calls up this dialog box. Let me pull it up for you. I select the column. Here I just have one so it's easy heart rate. On the PC by clicking on the control key and then clicking I can select individual descriptive statistics. So I can click on the, the N which should be 25, click on the mean, the standard deviation, the median, the range. I could click on these Q1 and Q3, which are interesting to look at, the quartiles of the data, the IQR, and I can also pick on the skewness and kurtosis, and the mode as well. Next, I just click Compute, and StatCrunch will spit back to me all of these values. To copy and paste this into Word, we would just go to Options, and if you go to the copy function it gives you the directions of what to do. You simply want to drag your mouse over it or control A to select all of the text and then control C to copy it. So I'll just drag over the summary statistics, right click on it, copy, and then paste it into my Word document. To bring the formatting in line you can probably just adjust the font. So we'll make it Times New Roman 10 or maybe Calibri 10. So now we have our chart pasted right into Word. On the Mac you can do the same thing, just copy and paste this into your Word doc on the Mac. So StatCrunch can quickly calculate your summary statistics for you. So now that we have the summary stats for this data, the next thing we want to do is a frequency distribution of the data. StatCrunch can easily do frequency distributions. We just click on the Stat tab, Tables, because we're going to make a frequency table, and that calls up this dialog box. Again, we click on our variable, and using our Control key, we can click on the frequency, which is what we want to report. We want the percent, frequency percent of total, and the cumulative frequency or cumulative percent of total. Then we click Compute and it immediately tells us that we've got a large range of values. 
So here we have, you see values ranging from the 90s all the way up to the 150s. So we've got a large range of values and it looks like that if we did a frequency table for all that we'd have you know 25 lists of variables. So what it's going to do is StatCrunch is going to automatically bin those numbers for us. So it's going to put us in bins to make our table more meaningful. So see it bin them in groups of 10. So 90 to 100 here was one value. It calculated the percent of the total and the cumulative percent of the total. So you can see that most of our values, 36 percent, were in the 120 to 130 range. So now our table, frequency table, looks just, looks just like what we see in the textbook. So if we look at page 24 in our text, our Polite textbook, you can see that we have the frequency, the percent, and the cumulative percent. And notice that at the end, the cumulative percent should equal 100, which it does in this case. So that's an example of a grouped frequency distribution. You can look in the textbook, just click back to page 22, and you'll see one that's not grouped. So it labeled every single distribution here. It did a distribution from lowest to highest and showed every value. So if you have, you know, numbers that only vary from 55 to 74, you could probably do this and leave the percents, the frequencies uh, done in this way for each value data. But in this example with our heart rate, we've got more values spread out over a large range and we can bin them. And StatCrunch intervenes and actually gives you hints about how to make your tables look really well. So again, to copy this table, we would just go to Options and Copy. Again, it prompts us to just scroll over them and copy and paste. So we can put this bin frequency distribution again right into our Word doc. So we can report this out. And again, we can change the font if we want to make it look a little better. So StatCrunch can very quickly give us a frequency table for our variable. So we've got all our descriptive stats done. We've got our frequency table done. The next bit is how are we going to graph this? And here we want to make a histogram because we have quantitative data that's contiguous. So it's going along one dimension, heart rate going from low to high. So we're going to click on the graph tab, go to histogram, again click on our variable heart rate. We're going to make a frequency histogram. Again we could bin if we wanted to, we'll come back to that one if we need to. We can also overlay our distribution. We have uh, a normal distribution, we can overlay with that, we can click on that. We can also include the mean and the standard deviation. We can also put markers in for the mean and the median if we wanted to. So let's first just do the plain histogram. And when I've finished, I'll click Compute. So here's our histogram for our data. Now if we wanted to change the font here, we would do that under the Options menu under Edit. We go to Edit and Fonts, and we can change our font sizes here although I've got them set at 16 and, and 14. 16 for our graphics, which is pretty good, but you can change these to make your graph look better. And you can see we have a fairly normal distribution here. As we know from our frequency distribution, we've got most of the values falling between 120 and 130, which is exactly what our histogram looks like. StatCrunch can quickly make a frequency histogram for your data. To copy this histogram, into our Word doc. Again, we go to Options and Copy. And again, here we're going to follow the directions. So we're going to right click to copy, go to our Word document, and now we're going to do Control Alt V on the PC, which brings up the Paste Special menu. And we're going to click Device Independent Bitmap and then click OK. And now we have our histogram, which we can reshape a little bit if we want. Now paste it into our Word. So very quickly we have our graphic, our 
frequency table, and our descriptive statistics. Now to do this on the Mac, I have a little graphic to show you. On the Mac, what you're going to do is click on the Options menu, Copy, just like we did in the PC. Again, you're going to follow the directions for the Mac. So you're going to right-click on your mouse to do this. And remember, on the Mac, if you have no right-click button, uh, press and hold the Control key while you click the mouse button. You're going to copy the image. Then on your Mac, you're going to right-click again when you get to Word. Click Paste Special, and then click on Picture, and then OK. And then you'll get your graph into your Word document on the Mac. The last thing we have to do, of course, is the Z-scores. So the Z-scores are the standard scores, and they're basically, remember, comparing everything to the average. So in our book, on page 50, that formula is there. So the z-score is simply the score minus the average, right, the mean, divided by the standard deviation. And we got all of that information from our descriptive statistics, which are up here. But we can have StatCrunch do that for us very easily. So I'll go back to StatCrunch. And for the z-score, I'm basically going to make the software compute it. To do that, I'm going to actually click on the Data tab and click on Compute and Compute Expression. So basically we're going to make the software do the work. Now remember, you're smart, the software is not. You've got to tell it what to do. You're going to give it the expression. So you've got to input what this um, expression is. So to do that, we just copy and paste the formula for the standard score into StatCrunch. and I have that right here. So here from page 50 we're going to have this expression we're going to put in there. So I'll just copy and paste that in. I'm going to call it the z-score. So all it's doing is taking that variable 1, so here we've got to put that in since we changed the label for variable 1, it's going to be heart rate minus the mean of the heart rate divided by the standard deviation of the heart rate. So I type all of this into the expression, just like I would in Excel, and hit Compute. Then it creates a new column, and here are all the z-scores. And we can do all of these by hand, right? If you take your calculator and you take the value, 136, minus the mean. Remember, we calculated that over here. The mean is 124.56 divided by the standard deviation, which is 13.47. 136 minus 124.56 is 11.44, divided by 13.47 gives me 0 0.849. 0 0.849. So the same score, we can compute that by hand, or we can let StatCrunch do it. So here it's computing all of these z-scores, and now that I have the z-scores computed, I can just drag over those values. On the PC, I'm going to hit Control-C to copy, and then I can go to my Word document and right-click and paste. And now I've pasted in all of my heart rate scores and then the z-scores. On the Mac, I would hit Apple-C to copy and then Apple-V to paste it into my Word document. So StatCrunch can be easily used to do descriptive statistics and get all of your values outputted into Word to put into your assignment or your project or other professional publication.